Welcome to Paranormal or Reality. On this episode, we explore the horror stories of working the night shift. When the unexplained becomes a reality, we don't want to face. Before we start, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy this content. Now join me as we explore the night shift. I'm from Australia. I used to work at a 24-7 rural petrol station in a small town called Barham. It's on the Murray River. If you don't know, there are quite a lot of spooky stories around the river. If you ask any local, they will have a story to tell. Anyway, when I started the job, I was told not to mind the shadows that you may see on the security cameras. As these cameras were constantly recording, you could watch the cameras on a small TV behind the counter. My boss said that they come and go around the petrol pumps, and sometimes the lights would go out over the pumps. He said to ignore it. If you want, you can stay in the back room until a customer walks in. When I asked why, what are they? In the most Aussie way possible, he goes, because they aren't customers, they aren't your friends, and stuff happens if you acknowledge them. With this, I started my first graveyard shift. Lucky for me, they had put someone else on the shift with me since I was new, but that didn't prepare me for that night. It was around 2 a.m. in the morning before things started to get weird. Every now and then, the fridge lights would flicker or the radio would go in and out of static. But what was truly unsettling was watching this figure on the cameras going back and forth just on the edge where the overhead lights for the pump stopped and just beyond the pitch black road. The other worker with me was Tony. He could also see it and seemed to try and ignore it. It felt like he was trying to not seem spooked for my sake. What was strange is that when a car headlight shine onto the road where the figure was pacing, it would just vanish, confirming that it wasn't physical. When the owner of the car finished filling up, he came inside to pay. I tried my hardest not to look like I'd just seen a ghost, but what the man said to me next just tipped me over that night. He said, Just had my first experience of a ghost car. I saw his tail lights, then suddenly it was gone. Creepy stuff out tonight. The understatement of the year. Needless to say, I am not ashamed to admit that I quit that job after four days, as I could not bring myself to work another night shift at that place. Still, till this day I don't know how anyone could. It was a wild experience. We fast forward a few months later. I had gone to a mate's house for a bonfire on his parents' property. We would burn off garden waste and sit around the fire having a chat with a few drinks and maybe a smoke to share. It was always very chill. It was mid-July, so it was quite a cold night. Now this is a small town, so it's not uncommon to know everyone, especially teenagers. It was no surprise to see Tony from the petrol station at the hangout. I knew I had to pick his brain for some context of what happened that night. As soon as I sat down to chat with him, we got to talking. I remember him saying, You know, you got out of that place at the right time. Asked him why that was. Did something happen? He then said, One of them managed to speak. I saw the shadow pacing, but then it started to call my name. I remember at this point that poor Tony looked really uncomfortable. I remember his eyes getting teary when he said, It sounded like my mom. She passed away when I was 12. He struggled so hard to get the next part out. It showed up every night after that, using the same voice asking me to come outside. I quit about two weeks after you did because of that. I still can't get the voice out of my head. It sounded like my mom, but it was way too sinister. When he said that last part, I felt a chill that went down my whole body. Even if this wasn't a paranormal encounter, whatever Tony did hear or see really got him. After that, a few more of us joined into the conversation. We talked about our encounters and other things we saw out in the bush. I now live in Brisbane now. City life is completely different, but the paranormal doesn't stop. Ever since that night, I have had a huge interest in the paranormal and started to find tools for skeptical thinking. I learned pretty quickly that most of the time paranormal activity can definitely be explained, but I do have a few more stories of encounters I have had that I cannot explain to this day. Barham will forever be the most haunted place I ever lived, I'm convinced that the land is haunted there. I'm going back there in the winter. I want to visit the petrol station to see if I can capture this encounter again. I work the evening and midnight shift in sterile processing at a hospital in my town. 
In short, I work in the basement, and I clean surgical tools. It's kind of nasty work, but it pays the bills, and it interests me, so I stay. A couple months ago, however, things got a little strange. I was gearing up for my last day of working midnights. I'm in the Deco Tam room with one of my co-workers. She's putting the last load of instruments into the washer. She's telling me about some weird stuff that's been going on that day. Lots of shadows and passing and whispers. I love spooky stories, so I'm essentially egging her on, telling her to tell me more. About that time, we both see something pass across the room on the other side of the sink. A woman, about my height, just walks across the room. My co-worker and I just stare at each other for a second. I was like, let's go, so we hurry up and finish what we're doing to get out of that room. Now, a couple hours pass, and I'm alone by this point. It's just me, my laptop, and the break room TV. It's about 1 a.m. As far as I know, I'm the only person in the whole basement. No one has the door code except employees of the department since our equipment is super expensive. If it gets broken or goes missing, the department foots the bill, and we don't get raises. So, I'm sitting there, one earbud in, listening to a podcast, and I hear the telltale beeping on the pin pad. At first, I thought one of the evening shift guys forgot something, so when I heard the door open, well, as you can probably guess, no one came in. I can't see the door from the break room, but I could see within a couple seconds if someone had come in. Sure enough, no one was there. I'm freaking out at this point. By the time day shift came in, I was so ready to get out of Dodge for the weekend. The door thing happened again a few weeks later, too. I was in the main sterile storage area, and I heard the doorbell ring. I go up to see if it's a rep from one of our supply companies or something on the way. I pass one of my co-workers coming from that direction. I heard the door open, so I ask her, Hey, did you get the door? She looks at me all confused and says, no, I thought maybe you'd gotten it. So basically, doorbell rang, door opened and closed, and neither of us did it. Plus, neither of us ever saw rep or store's personnel enter or exit. Door didn't open again for anyone to leave either. Later that day, I'm putting together instruments in the clean room from the table I'm at. I just watch a chest tube clamp go soaring across the spare instruments room. It smacks off the far wall and lands in the middle of the floor. Another co-worker of mine saw it out of the corner of her eye. We were both absolutely losing it. Then, our boss pipes up and says, Oh, so the ghost is finally getting comfy with both of you. So apparently this is common. Then she proceeds to tell us about the kid who peeks around shelves and plays hide-and-seek with the older woman in the department. Also, the man who leans on the fax machine to watch the midnight shifters work when they're alone and the nun who walks the old side of the hospital. I love ghosts and all, but oh my god, the day I saw the nun in the old side was absolutely horrifying. You can guess who doesn't go to the old side anymore. I used to clean a high school and middle school after hours, usually finishing up around 11 p.m. at the middle school. The first several weeks everything was quite but little eerie, being in a large empty school mostly alone. I did have one other person with me, but she had her own section and I had mine. So, we hardly ever saw or heard each other throughout the night. A few weeks in, I started to get the feeling of being watched, but I just listened to music and would talk out loud to help keep my mind in check. I was also aware, being a paranormal fanatic, that EMFs, the amount of power surging through the wiring, can have an effect on people. So, I paid attention to when and where I would get feelings to see if I could find an electrical closet nearby to help explain it. Then one night, when I was in the science wing cleaning out one of the rooms, I heard a sharp, loud bang coming from above me. Probably just the air ducts, I thought, dismissing it. Then it happened again. Two bangs. So I made my own noise by tapping my knuckles on a desk in a pattern mostly just to amuse myself. The disembodied bang copied my pattern. We made knocking noises back and forth in cohesive patterns for a minute before I decided to take a brisk walk to find Norma. I am not afraid of spirits, but was starting to feel a little overwhelmed suddenly. 
she confirmed that there are things that happen in that school, sharing a story about how in the art room, something likes to throw students' projects off the shelves at her sometimes. The most notable experience I had working here was one night when Norma and I were just about done putting our stuff away in a closet that was somewhat near the office area. The wall between the office and administration hall had many windows, so you could easily look in and see if lights were on or people were there. The office was dark and locked up. Suddenly we heard the distinctive sound of the PA system turning on with the receiver starting to static along with taping on the mouthpiece. Then it clicked off. We looked at each other in fascinated disbelief and decided to just double check that no one was in there. No one was. And the PA system is not networked with other schools. I named whatever it was, Charlie. Giving it a name helped me deal with it. Other things that would happen like toilets randomly flushing and stuff. It was definitely interesting. I found myself wishing whatever it was would do more. But then my time there ended when summer came along. I used to work as a security officer. I was asked to work a Saturday night shift at an old warehouse in Dudley. I arrived at the location at 5 p.m. where the building was a huge brick warehouse with some makeshift offices at the front. I walked in, took the keys from the day officer, and locked the doors behind him. Everything seemed normal for a while. It was a bit creepy as the building was so old, but I was used to that. Around 1 a.m. I got a call from the warehouse manager. One of his night drivers had forgotten his paperwork and asked me to go into the office, right at the back of the warehouse, to collect it for him so he can come pick it up. I said fine and headed to the office. The warehouse was pitch black. I had a small torch, but it barely lit my way. I walked through until I got to the office door, which was a huge metal sliding door. It made a screeching noise as I pulled it open. As I entered the room, the office fax machine was blinking and the paperwork was printing out. I grabbed the paperwork, but as I turned round, I looked to the other end of the office and saw what I can only describe as a dark figure hunched over, shivering. I could hear what sounded like breathing, but like if you were freezing cold. I stood there for about 30 seconds motionless, staring at this figure. I turned back slowly to close the door behind me, rushing back to the front office where I locked the door and waited for the driver. An hour later, the driver collected his paperwork. For the rest of the night, I'd convinced myself it was just the dark playing tricks with me but it didn't stop me from unlocking the office door or checking the cameras every few minutes. Once it hit 5 a.m., I got a knock on the door from the day officer. I handed him the keys and expected him to come in, but he locked the door from the outside. I asked him if he was going in. He said he doesn't go inside when there's nobody else in the building. He just sat in his car and waits outside. I said, that's a bit strange. He looked at me and asked if I went anywhere else other than the security office. I told him that I went to the back office to get paperwork for a driver, not telling him about the other part. I'll never forget the look he gave me or what he said then. He looked me in the eyes and said, well, then you know why I don't go in there alone. It gave me chills, but I shrugged it off, then just said, okay, and left went home. Safe to say on the way home, I called my office and requested not to go back there. Thanks for tuning in. Watch another video if you dare.